Hello and welcome back to Songs of Six. Welcome back, welcome back. I think we are on episode eight now. And I found myself at that midpoint of the series where most Songs of Six series kind of end up. And I kind of get tired and I don't want to finish the city. And I said to myself, no, I owe the viewers, I owe everyone. And I'm just, I'm just joking, but I'm... Really, I wanted to complete this city, and so I put some good time and some good effort into doing that. And we've gotten a lot further. We've gotten a lot further. So, the last episode, I forgot to mention my favorite part, which is the Telapi Pleasure Palace zone here. We've got Telapis working and living. Uh, they actually should have houses here. Yep. Wait, no. They aren't allowed specifically to Tilapi. There we go. Those are Tilapi houses. And the Tilapi Pleasure Palaces here basically are massage parlors where the humans go to get a little bit of a touch off, you know, if I'm, you know what I mean. You know, before and after work, even a little bit during work, you know, sometimes you get tired from all of that knowledge work and you need to go get, you know, relaxing and release some steam. So yeah, and look at all these freaking humans releasing some steam, cleaning up stinky freaking tilapi swimming with them here we are though here we are i spent a lot of time you can see i kind of put some decorations in i decorated the outskirts of town i haven't finished this half obviously but i moved all of the resource buildings that we had tightly knit in here i moved them all and as you can see i still haven't finished this half of the city i have just run out of steam once i finished the last move I, I just kind of called it quits for today because it's kind of that point where this game, once you get to this point, you can't really play it in big batches or you'll get tired. And that brings me to something that I've seen recurringly in the Songs of Six community only recently, but it's the concept of skill in this game and where people get confused. I think a lot of people, this is me not trying to talk shit but it is kind of because no one is skilled at this game you're playing a single player game and therefore there is no skill base so at a certain point i've seen a lot of people say that they're there's a skill problem there's no skill problems there's no nothing this game you could sit here and watch it burn and have fun if you if you like that that's what you can do you can do whatever you like for me personally, I like these little grid cities. Uh, some people might not like that. And I have been having a blast playing it at my leisure, not forcing myself to get the max amount of properties. I, like I could go and buy a mercenary army and capture every single territory across the entire world, own the world and say I beat the game and then, you know, say I'm the best ever but in reality that's not the fun of it what's fun for me is saving up the money and actually buying regions so I've been purchasing regions we've patched we've purchased all of these regions from this guy he is slowly falling apart I want this one here but actually it looks like Verder is the one with the gems he has a lot of good stuff here nice 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 so for some reason though I'm unable to actually build oh I still have negative 10 admin so I need to check and see if when I get positive admin I can actually build again or if I've just been capped at a specific amount of building I don't think that's the case though because I've heard people say that they've got a lot of a lot of buildings so 
Anyways, on the topic of skill though, there is no skill. This is a RP game, single player city builder and have fun, always have fun. And if you're one of those people who thinks it's a skill game, um, maybe in combat, there's a little bit of skill. There's a little bit of challenge here and there, but it's not like it, you're bad. I, I always say, I've seen a couple people say it recently, skill issue based off my comments on Cretonians. And most of them, haven't played the Cretonians or the Talapi to actually comment on them. So them saying a skill issue to me is kind of laughable when I make the point of if I can do this, you can see my population is the only thing that is keeping me back. I can't get a higher population, but that's not because of anything other than immigration and breeding. So ideally we need more breeders. Um, but someone said that was a skill issue on my behalf because I don't have more breeders. It's more like a kind of a veteran behavior because I've never built breeders in the past. They, they just aren't one of those buildings that ever seemed valuable. And now that ages are a little bit more, like you have to actually raise them up, I think, to six. They were at four before or something like that. They, they got a little bit more time to them. So... It kind of always just seemed like a backwards idea compared to immigration. And that's what that's usually what I go for. So regardless, that that's just my two cents. I have seen it quite a bit though, and it has annoyed the shit out of me. And this is my answer to anybody who says skill issue. There is no skill. As a lot of people like to point out, you can literally just get shit delivered to you, maxed out to the fucking point where you literally have so much stuff sitting around your capital that you just don't know what to do with and that's quite all right that's quite all right this is that's the fun part of organizing and managing building this amazing city seeing all these little blue squares move about and you can see what i've started to do here is i've built a nice little service zone in the middle so we have access to some good wells some hearths some fight pits stages guard posts and don't mind this it's it's off there's a little bit of a gap. There's two two pixel difference on this side. Whatever, who cares? We've got the lavatories tooting, tooting away. We've got to actually decorate this whole bit up here. So what happened is I decided to kind of put services in between, kind of smushed in, and then we'll have these guys, but they're not gonna have the max amount of services. Because if anything, if I wanna build a nice uh, a restaurant or tavern, I'll put them here. These guys are workers. Their job is to do this stuff. The guys that I care about, these guys, you can see there's an actual metric fuck ton of them. The They matter a lot to me, and I need to make sure that their services are met. So having this region here fulfilled, they're actually pretty far from their services if I look at it. Because look at where the vast majority of them are spending their time. I always like to look at the mob. If you start to get to these mob stages, you, you can start to see where your flow of traffic really sits. So for example, this guy, this speaker is obviously gonna have zero service. Why? Because he just literally has way too many people to deal with it. He can't, so he goes back to home and those services get missed. Same with this guy and this guy. So sometimes it's really crucial to put two guys and you can see that they're not working right now of course probably because the uh, workforce is short and i don't actually no they they are there they just are off doing something else they're probably sitting in the crowd themselves saying where's the services you bastard but the idea is that you always want to have a couple speakers so that they have access to multiple different speakers in case there's not one so there's no one here. I probably should put more. I've been working heavily on the services, but having it at 19.9 is one of the highest I've had, especially for humans. The only thing that I lack is occupation, and it's going. It's going pretty well. We're getting our education up there, our fulfillment. Retirement is something that is just not going to really likely happen, but it's not something that matters. And you can see that's that's kind of the joke here. We have happiness and, and loyalty maxed out. I I honestly think that Jake is just like, nah, you can't really keep immigrating. You're just going to need to start getting uh, some nurseries going along. So I think in the next episode, that's going to be my, my next focus is literally building a baby making zone. Just a specific zone to make tons and tons of human babies 
so I'd never have to look back and see there's no babies or there's no people. So what happened is we basically moved everything. I decided that this would be the crafting side and it's not really based on anything other than this is crafting, that's refinement side. So this is crafting side. Uh, there's carpenter building and then there's a warehouse next door to it. These I kind of find to be the best option as resources are gonna be delivered from the world to the workshop or the warehouse they will fill up this warehouse with whatever's being delivered. So let's say this guy here, if, oh, that's a bad example. Um, this gentleman here, we set this to cotton and you want to set it to like 20 because not even, I think 10 would be good. Why? Because what happens is they're going to come in here. They're going to fill this up. And when they fill this up, the guys are going to basically only need to walk two and a half feet to get to what they need to we're gonna actually put some some walls in here some of these little bits so they when they get what they need they can quickly make the resource the product put it back in here and they they don't have to do the distance they don't you don't have to have many delivery men working in here because of the fact that there's a guy whose job it is to basically come and deliver those from the world map to you saves you a lot of time at least that's kind of what i put my brain to and the same you can see this is literally ideally if i was to go back and do everything i'd probably flip this building and make sure that this storage is next to the workshop or the warehouse i mean but these are inconsequential issues really not something that's gonna cause me major problems and i always try to bring that point up like i was saying about skill issue it's it's tiny numbers. It's tiny, tiny numbers. I have 45,000 swords. You only have 46 or 43,000 or whatever. So you, you're worse than me. I am the best set songs. No, you don't. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> it's just, you know, you play in your way and you have a good time. And if you get tired of it, you go do something else. That's exactly what a lot of people seem to be coming into an issue of the longevity of it. I thought about making a video of Songs of Six and its replayability and especially where the game lies because I've had the argument numerous times with people that this game is not like other games because of the fact that it is all about role playing. It is strictly a role playing game. And some people disagree and that's fair, you can always disagree. But in my personal view, and especially from a lot of other people's views that enjoy the game the most, they play it with a role-playing perspective. And that's where they get the value. And a lot of people see that as, oh, well, Jake isn't giving you the value. You have to find it yourself. And that's a very negative <laughs> outlook to take on, on uh, gaming and life in general. So I think that's, that's it for my two cents on that topic. And I, I probably won't cover it again, but I hate... I hate it, man. The gatekeeping in the Six Community needs to chill the hell out because nobody is is a bad player. You're all you're all phenomenal in your own right. If someone makes a tiny little town or a tiny little village or a huge ass mega city, it all looks good to me. I like to see people play their way because that's that's what gaming has always been about, you know, especially back in the old days. The old days. So I thought that this was done, but apparently it wasn't. And I actually remind myself, I actually have to take these guys back. These laborers can go back into the labor pool. So what I do is I put haulers in front of a building with all the resources dedicated to that specific building and a workstation so they get that done. And it usually works pretty efficiently. So now we have this guy. We're going to go over how trade or not trade, but transport works. So let's actually do uh, coal because Nah, we don't need to transport. Hmm. You don't need to transport goods. We'll turn him off, actually. Why do I say this? Because these are full. This is full. They're not actually going to need to transport anything. Because the guys, like I said, the caravans will come and deliver it straight to the warehouse here. So this grain stays full. Ideally, we could drop it down to 10 and give it some more bread storage, and we drop this down to 10. This strategy, I think, is probably the biggest of the brain moves. And you could drop it down to, like, two warehouse workers, because their only job 
or three is really or four actually because there's two if there's off off service and then there's two on service they grab bread they put it here they walk back over here they grab bread and they put it in here that's their only job and their only existence for this warehouse they do not need to go anywhere and matter of fact lower the radius down to zero so they do not go anywhere other than right here to grab what they need and that's it that's perfect that's exactly what we need and the brewer will have that same kind of setup going but we will have a hauler or somebody from over here this potter zone to deliver the pottery but the coal and the grain will not be a problem whatsoever we should be able to make enough brews to actually make a difference because I have never actually seen a surplus of alcohol in a city in this game in all my days it's very hard to make Back to the refinement zone, though, we, we're still kind of working. We have finished this half of the city services, but you can see what the other half looks like. It's going to be the exact same side over here. But we have the baker. Baker busting away, making some bakery goods. We've got the brewer. We've got the metal smelter, and we've got the final weaver. There is a f other refinery building, the charcoaler. I do not need that, obviously. For crafting... The crafting buildings that I built the largest are the ones that I feel are the most important. The ones that I can build smaller, like a mechanic, potter, ration maker, smithy, they're going to be in a boy boyer. We, as we're going to need a boyer. God damn, I forgot about that. We're going to need to put those over here. But the way I'm going to do it is these guys are kind of just based on resource and support. Building pots, they're making tools, these guys are making machine parts etc etc this other half because this is the military zone will be focused on specifically making bows metal armor all kinds of leather goods etc so there is a plot and a plan to it and i'll have another warehouse right over here probably so that we can store up all of our excess goods for the troops all the troops will come and grab what they need ideally i'll try to make a better shaped building the best shape for me is to have the wide open doors and then these just lined up in rows so that they can just come and grab off of the the crate fill themselves up with the resource they need and kind of go where they got to go because the troops actually have to grab what they need at least if you're doing a defense but from what i've seen i think jake may have actually taken sieges away for v66 because I, when you get attacked by a raid, they just pull you straight to the world map and you fight them there. So I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's that's the case now. But we're doing phenomenal, phenomenal. It's, it's amazing to see how much I can change in such a short period of time because I really didn't expect myself to be able to do it. I was kind of like doubting myself for a little bit and I did it. I finally moved all of these and I know somebody was in the comments on I think the video before this one or the last one and he was saying how do I expand to this point of the city. So when it comes to expansion I, I kind of commented on it before but I will comment on it again. When I expand I always make sure that the expansion goes smoothly and by that I mean I literally will copy the building that needs to be copied let it be finished and then do it that way so when the building is finished i can remove the old building and it will be a seamless transition like nothing happened if you're trying to get from the smaller stage to the bigger stage it's it's really really simple just build a bigger building so for example once you have i think that people should get the impression that a small building is okay early on so if you had a small smithy a small smelter all of these guys with less than 10 workers each you can get get by for a good period of time to at least 500 or a thousand people once you hit that population once you start to accumulate a good amount of resources then you can build the larger shaped buildings whichever one you feel is the best upgrade i often go for things like smithies and not, not with these smelters or masonries larger masons help a lot when you're a dondarian or a human you really want to have a lot of cut stone paper making especially if you've got administration needs so 
these paper makers, they have a, a situation where I still kind of am confused or not confused, but I need to plan a better situation for this gear. So they have hauler stations. You can see the capacity is 800. There's 10 total crates. They are pulling from this area here, but we also have these these Oryx and these Onks delivering uh, transports full of paper. So this guy is delivering paper, putting it on here, and they bring it all the way to this half of the city. But you can still see it says unavailable paper. That is something that I need to, to deal with. So I'm not sure if I want to put an actual dedicated warehouse on the side and just kind of remove certain things to make it fit or maybe even just make an open warehouse let's actually look if i was to build a warehouse with no roof and it was three by three actually it's five okay so we could do that how much it's about the exact same I've had somebody say that the, the hauler is stupid, and this is kind of why I say that the hauler is not stupid. Because he's holding a good amount of stuff. The issue is that we're just using administration, the paper, far too fast. And also, that that orc just glitched. I don't know if you saw that, but that orc just glitched through the thing there. Uh, I, hope he's, I hope he's okay. Ideally, what I'll probably do... Is I'll add the import depot for paper over here. No. It doesn't fit anywhere nicely. God dang it. God dang it. You know what? Fine. Go back to 10 workers because this is the most important part of my city. After everything else, there's really nothing because they are producing the resources necessary to keep the city flowing. For example, all of this coal, all of this grain, everything that's coming in allows our city to just continuously grow without looking at it. And if I have any money problems, I can go in here, talk to my boy Ducal, and say, hey, man, look, I got a lot of stuff. How about you take, like, literally my entire stock of all of the stuff that's, like, overflowing? And he will take it. And you could just give it to him straight. Or you could ask for a couple thousand dollars. We'll just ask for some, some money like that. Do sevenths all the way across the board. Get some happiness. He is starting to dislike me because of my overall wealth and my my size, my threat. So he, he, he may need to be helped with some emissaries or something like that. I don't want to lose Ducal. Ducal's my homie, but if he comes at me he's going down he's going down hard i hope he knows that because i have some really well trained troops our army is no joke for being humans we'll actually be able to hold him back but the only thing actually is we don't have the equipment necessary we are actually well below half on our stocks for all equipment which is sketchy so i'm gonna actually have to focus in the next one building the military zone and the procreation zone but I'll leave that for my future self. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for sticking it out. I know that sometimes not the, the most interesting of videos, but you guys who watch these videos are awesome. And I hope you guys look forward to some more Timberborn because I've got a lot more of that coming soon. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.